Hey, yo, it's Guido. Welcome to Tactics Talk. Thanks for tuning in. Always appreciate your support of the channel in whatever form it comes in. On this episode, you can see we are right into 1.0. So I've already done my initial impressions video, about an hour of that mess. If you want to look at me messing around with the UI and just kind of looking at the maps first blush as I went. So I played a little bit more and now I'm going to start coming to you with some of the meta positions the old meta positions on the maps because that's what I'm going to do initially while I start to learn what's going on with the new maps. We are on Westfield. You can see that I have spawned in the northeast corner and I am up top. So there still remains an up top and a down below and as a matter of fact it is still quite far down to the hole down there. And I am headed up here to where the hills are where they were and where they are now. And you can see right away that they're designed just a little bit differently, maybe a little flatter, but still quite prominent. So that's going to be a big hold down fighting area right here, but it appears that they've redesigned them quite a bit. They look similar, but definitely a bit different. There's the little TD sniping hill behind us. The one on the other side we'll see in a minute still exists right there on what D1 and E1. There's still a town in a T shape right there and of course well, I'm not going to get down here very much we'll get down into the southwest part and I'll show you some of that by the end of the game but the south side and the east side will have to be for another video you can see that I'm top tier in a 357 pretty good setup and a couple of artillery to deal with so I'm going to head off to the meta position I'll end up pausing quite a bit on this one hopefully that doesn't annoy you guys too much but that little rock right there was not there there's a lot of stuff like that now on the terrain. So while you're driving around and attempting to shoot, especially in scouts, you're going to have to be cognizant of those things and be very careful. Also, these low brick walls or rock walls are everywhere. And if you're a heat shooter, things, obstacles like this are going to be a big problem for you to try to work around. If you're clever, you could even go somewhat hold down in a spot like that, especially if you know he's spamming heat at you. Now, it's pretty low, but if you've got a low tank, look at this guy right here, I could cover up a bit of my lower plate right there with that rock wall. That's kind of an emergency situation. I'm not saying that you want to get hold down behind this rock wall and you'll be impervious, but just think about that while you're flinging the heat and the HE and while you're fighting guys one-on-one -on -one or something like that. So I'm going to head up here. There goes those rocks. You see how they break apart. I'm, on, I'm sitting on about, just to let you guys know, and I did this in my last video, I am sitting at about, when I get over here, oops, I don't want the recommended. Didn't mean to do that. I am sitting at about here, which I'm going to change it back to medium on the extra effects and extra effects in sniper mode because of all the gun flash and stuff flying around and sparks can be very disorienting, at least to me. You may want something different. That is to taste. Results may vary. <clears throat> So I'm going to head up here, which used to be kind of the uh, the back edge of the hill. But you can see that there's more of the back edge now. There's that ridge there. There's another sniper ridge here. And you can actually come around behind this for another look. And it looks like you can actually sneak along in the low spot here and maybe go hold down peeking up here. So the options for approach right here are quite a bit different. I'll come around here. Initially, I don't see anything. I think people are being very careful early on, but I do get spotted there, and that was very interesting. And what it ends up being is there's a TD right here, and he can actually see through that V, which means he's got shots of some kind in there, whether it was just a shot at the top of my turret or what. But be cognizant of that. Moving up here is going to expose you to their sniper sitting there. And, of course, I didn't spot him because he's pushed up. We will see him make an appearance in just a moment. Tiger One's with me. We got the Soma SM guy over there. And there's a 257, and we've got a KV5, and I'll just snap a shot right there. As I've said before, I recently reviewed the T10 for a 122. This is a pretty good soft stack gun, and it can kick, it can pull off shots like that. There's a miss, but again, didn't really expect to hit that. Would have been nice. See the tracers going in and kind of exploding. That's a little bit disorienting as well because sometimes you'll shoot, you'll see that kind of tracer going in, you'll see the hit on the tank, and you're like, oh great, I probably damaged them because there's a bunch of smoke and fire and stuff, but that's not necessarily true. The bounces look the same is what I'm saying. There's another example. That went into the ground, and it sort of looked like a hit on him too. So it's just a lot of smoke and 
explosions. There's the scorpion. I'm just going to throw one at him. And obviously I missed. There's a rock right there as well, which complicated things. So I'm not really exactly sure what's going on there. A 257 is going to be problematic for me if I can get him into the side. Yep, there we go. I think I actually hit right of his pike nose, so that's going to be a bounce. And I'm just mostly trying to see, right, can I get a light on that? Can I get a highlight on that scorpion? But we'll push the IS-6. Turns out in the new World of Tanks 1.0, pushing around a flank and shooting guys in the side still works. Now, this is a bit of a mistake because I sort of scoffed their other TDs, and all of a sudden I'm fa facing down a WZ. And that shot just goes, I don't know where. Shots are going in. He's reloading, probably thinking, come on, come on. I'll just shoot one as I back up. I'm very surprised he didn't actually shoot me again. I thought for sure he'd reload in time. It does have a long reload, so maybe he was looking at somebody else. And he now gets hammered. It's been spotted again because that 430's gone up, and he probably fired in there somewhere. So I'll come around, let's go help with this 257 if I can. Coming around, coming around. Watch this on that poor guy. Badoosh. <laughs> the Suma ammo wrecked him and blew him up. You're all blowed up. Got a 1357 raging around. He's kind of causing chaos there along with a bat chat. I don't know, it's, holy cow, they're really cleaning our guys up. So let's get rid of him. Do not need to be shooting so much heat, but as you know, if you follow my videos at all, I tend to press 2 and fire it all. It's just a... It is a personal problem that I only occasionally am able, to, am able to stop. I will do it a little while here. I'll switch over to AP. Unfortunately, that guy tracks me there. I was really expecting to get hammered by Artie twice. The Suma is telling people to push and stop being wimps. All right, so that fight's very similar as far as the idea of it, that it's critical terrain. I'm going to save my final input on that for later until I've played it many more times, but it feels like that spot's still critical. You can see there's the scrum going on on the east side with the mediums and the lights still. So I don't see any major advantage, any different major advantage of going somewhere else on this map. It will be interesting to see if the city is actually more or less important. I find it to be a secondary in the past. I, I'm going to say it probably still is. But as far as the micro positioning up on these hills, you can see that while it's the same, it's different, right? The actual pass you're taking are different, but the idea of it is the same. Avoid getting thumped by TD sitting up on the TD hill right here. And I don't think there is a rock there. I thought there was a rock there. So the rock I must have, I'm, I'm really kind of riffing here, but I think the rock I was seeing is actually the rock behind those guys. So I don't see a rock right there. That's good to know. So back to what I was saying, the micro positioning is, is different because the shapes of the hills are different, but the idea of how you're going to fight in there, getting around to people's sides, pushing in, that kind of thing is the same. When you come off the hill, remember how this was just kind of a, a big bare open space here. And there are a couple bushes and that's another thing that I'm going to have to investigate as well as you guys quite a bit because, because there are a lot more bushes and trees on the maps than there were. And I know there's been a lot of complaints about certain maps have been denuded in certain places. And that while that's true, other maps like this have bushes everywhere. This little bush, that little bush over there, the, the bushes on the back edge, there's one there. The smaller scouts can get into some of these things, and those may become, I don't think may, will become important in certain situations. So we'll have to see how that plays out. Look at all these bushes here. And there were bushes along this approach, but not quite as many. There's trees all over. Also, the, uh, the background is much different. I think they did a nice job with the red line, so you kind of know what the confines of the map are because it would be very easy to kind of get lost in here and figure out that some of this stuff just behind the red line is in play. So that actually works out pretty nicely. It's fairly apparent where the, the map play area is and where it isn't. That guy was sitting right there in a bush. So look at that. There was a bush right there which was not there before. And he's right behind that. I had to get right up on him. And that's going to be a trick because when you're trying to do those final push out of the TDs and the campers in the back by the cap, it's going to be a little more difficult, I think, on certain maps now because there's so much more cover for them to hide in. So your approaches and the way you come about it's going to have to be probably a little bit different. A lob a shot in on him. That was a good opportunity to kind of see that tracer effect for quite a long time because it took a while for it to get there. What well, this is a this shot. <laughs> Watch the roll on this. 330. Holy macaroni. 330. 
four. <laughs> I, was, I was like, dude, come on. Down he goes. And you can see then, I'm just letting you drive along here, that you've got that side there. It's not nearly as steep. Remember that was a big cliff that went up into, into the air, and now it's a big green field, which is quite a bit different from what it looked like. The feel of this map is very different. This map sort of felt like kind of a desert or a high step map kind of thing. And now it looks more like a what I assume it was supposed to be, kind of a grassy, forested area with a, with a couple towns involved. We'll just look at it as we go. I don't get any more shots. You can see that there's still that hill there. It's not as steep. It looks like it's flattened out, which is a theme for all the maps. There's still that rocky cliff right there, but it's not as sheer. It looks like a couple ways to come down it, really, without killing yourself. These bushes were here before, so they still exist. And you're coming up here into these. There's two spots up here, at least there used to be. And it looks like they're still here. This first little area where the uh, south west spawn would go to and then there's another one up here you can see it way over here where the two dead tanks are where the northeast spawn would go to and then there's that center one where that 3002d is dead and the 170 or the t71 da over there so that still exists so the general shape and idea of this is the same but the cliffs are not quite as sheer i mean they're still quite steep there's the the bridge over there let me know if there's any shenanigans to be had on the bridge. I know that in the past you used to be able to jump across at spots and things. It doesn't look like you're able to do that. In fact, I don't see if the break is over there or not anymore. I'm not sure if that break is there. I'll have to look at it at some other video. There's a train that's on the edges of it, so you, that's interesting. I wonder what kind of cover that provides. Probably not very much. There was a time when this map first came out, you could actually drive out onto these maps and and then a time when you could jump to it and you'd occasionally find guys out here shooting people but they pretty quickly died because they're so exposed. Okay, that is first blush on the north east spawn of Westfield fighting in the old meta position which I would say at first blush is still pretty much the same meta position in the northwest beating their heavies and then coming around behind them while the east side is stagnant or just a skirmish with the lighter with the lighter tanks. 2,742, yeah, it's okay, 1,000 on the spotting. And the Object 430 and I had a very permissive setup right there. You know, a, a tier nine heavy and medium in a 357 are gonna have a have a pretty good time unless they really get jumped on. I was gonna use a different word, but I won't use that, <laughs> I won't use that rude word. All right, guys, that is it for me. Thanks for tuning in. I will continue to do some of these meta position kind of maps as I'm starting to learn them as well. If you see me, doing something or saying something and you've learned something new on one of these maps and you think I'm not right or you have an input, please put them down in the responses in the comment section so everybody can learn from it as we figure out exactly what is going on as far as gameplay goes with 1.0. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in and we will see you.